Greetings from the UK. I'm happy to be able to join this event and thank you to Ajahn Joe for the invitation. Back in 1956, Professor Ban Chop visited Jiangdong and wrote about Dai Kun, noting phonetic differences between the town and a village about five miles away. This talk provides an update of the phonological variation in those two places, as well as eight other Kun villages around Jiangdong. A subtitle for my presentation is a question that Professor Banchop herself raised. Can Kern retain its distinctives when surrounded by bigger Dai speaking groups? After a brief introduction to Kern, I'll give some more detail of what Professor Banchop wrote about Kern, and then I'll show an overview of the results of my study on contemporary varieties. I'll compare those with contemporary Shan from Zhengdong to see whether any sound change can be attributed to contact with Shan. By way of introduction to Kun, we can see here a language tree and I've highlighted three closely related languages, Kun, Lana of Northern Thailand and Dai Lu of Sipsong Bana. Kun is spoken in and around Jiangdong in Eastern Chan State, Myanmar. Ethnologue gives a population estimate of 100,000 speakers of Kun. Uh, I would guess that's a little optimistic. I've circled uh, an area uh, that would have been dominated by the Lana Kingdom of the 1300s and 1400s, uh, where Kun was very closely linked with Northern Thai from Chiang Mai and Dai Lu from Sipsong Bana. They shared cultural and historical links. One of those cultural connections was the use of the same writing system based on the Dai Tam script. Here we see a picture and if you're familiar with Burmese script you'll notice that many of the characters are identical with Burmese characters. Originally the Tam script would have looked like the present-day Northern Thai script, but during a period of Burmese influence, Dai Lu and Dai Kun started using character shapes that were um, simpler and uh, they look much more like Burmese, but spelling conventions still remain uh, very similar to Thai. So moving on to Professor Ban Chop's description of Kun, my a source for what she wrote was the book version, Gale uh, Mantai Nai Ratchan, visiting a Thai village in Shan State, uh, published in this form in 1983, but originally published in installments in 1958 to 1959. Uh, should say. Uh, Professor Banchop was writing for a more general audience, not just linguists, and the book contains uh, many examples of uh, culture and comparisons with uh, other uh, Dai varieties. So in 1956, she went to Jiangdong uh, for just a few days, and while there she visited a village about five miles to the east called Wan Jai. And you can see by the terrain that um, the village of Wan Jai is on the extreme uh, east of the Jengdung Plain. And uh, that location uh, perhaps explains the name, which probably means um, a village at the edge. Uh, this picture is from 2006. So, uh, Professor Bunchop didn't write a formal uh, phonological description. Uh, what she wrote was written in Thai script, and uh, that has limitations uh, in describing, describing some phonetic detail, uh, particularly for the tones. Um, but she most likely helped Soren Egerod 
to visit Zhengdong the following year, 1957, and in 1959 he published a description of the phonology and orthography uh, of Kun. And this, these are the consonant phonemes, uh, 20 initials, and uh, a much reduced um, group of uh, final consonants, uh, common inventory for many uh, uh, Dai languages. Uh, so in comparison to that, uh, these are phones that I've identified from what she wrote in Thai, her transcriptions of um, pronunciations in Zhengdong. And we notice a couple of things uh, that the uh, alveolar voiced stop was realized as the lateral L and the trill was realized as a, um, a glottal fricative. Uh, in, that was in Zhengdong, in Wan Jai, then um, my data uh, doesn't include uh, the F, um, or I should say what she wrote didn't include the F, although it's likely that that's just because it was a small uh, data set. Um, the uh, alveolar stop was uh, pronounced as a, as a stop. Uh, and interestingly, she said that uh, Wanjai was the one place to pronounce the, uh, the trill, uh, but she said it sounded more like an L. Uh, so maybe it was some intermediate sound like an alveolar lateral flap. Um, I don't know, she wrote it with a lordling. Uh, and the glottal fricative was actually pronounced as the lateral L. Um, this is a, a chart of the vowel phonemes identified by Egerod. And again, it's the familiar... Um, set of nine uh, positions, vowel positions for Dai languages, uh, and he identified uh, contrastive length in all positions. Uh, the mid, short mid vowels are highlighted here um, because he said that they have restricted distribution, uh, namely they can only occur before final glottal stop, not in other types of closed syllables. Uh, there'll be more on um, these vowels later on. Uh, in comparison, uh, Professor Bancho identified most of those um, most of those vowels positions. Um, the it's the low vowels that she uh, didn't identify, and uh, a similar picture for Wanjai village. Regarding the tones, uh, a distinctive uh, feature of Daikun is the split in the A column between the second and third rows. Uh, this is shared by Dailu and Mengyong and uh, Northern Thai. Um, and then the other rows all have a split between rows three and four. A very familiar picture. Uh, and um, the tones identified by uh, Professor Bancho. Um, the A column correctly has the, the difference between uh, row two and row three, um, but writing in Thai script uh, has its limitations with differentiating falling tones. Um, and so the Thai script wasn't able to differentiate the um, the difference in the C column, for example, and um, probably in the B column that was there. Before presenting my study, then uh, there are some intervening studies that have showed change in different parts of uh, the Zhengdong plane, and those provide a list of things to look for in the contemporary data. So the, the first study was uh, Rasi Petsuk in 1978, 
um, who worked with a speaker from the north of Chengdu to the north and the uh, phoneme inventory is the smallest of anybody who's written about Daikun. Um, so uh, you can see here I've highlighted um, the stops, the voiced stops B and D uh, and the, uh, the fricative F and again the uh, the trill R. So all of these um, are realized by um, other sounds. They're not pronounced as they would have been in the past. Petsuk was talking particularly about uh, spoken uh, kun and the uh, she said uh, the written language does still uh, have phonemic contrast um, for these phonemes. So it's an interesting um, mix of uh, description. Um, Petuk identified contrastive length only in the low vowels, again talking about the uh, spoken language. This slide shows historical development of Kuhn vowels. Uh, I used the reconstruction of Proto-Southwestern Dai from uh, John Pityapon, 2009, and uh, points to note here, particularly the mid vowels. So uh, for Kuhn, the mid vowels uh, the, the short mid vowels A and O, o drop to their respective uh, lower counterparts, namely E and O in uh, modern uh, varieties on the whole. And uh, I've highlighted the short mid central vowel because I have very little data and it's uh, the few examples I do have are difficult to distinguish from the high central vowel. Uh, I think the frequencies are generally low, so the functional load on that contrast is also low. But more study is needed on that. The other big uh, variational uh, feature is the merger of tones in the B column, uh, which was identified by Petsuk in her study. Um, the My study of 2012 looked at uh, various places and found that, uh, yes, the, uh, the five-tone system was spoken in a majority of locations, but the six-tone system still existed in the Menglang area, um, in particular the village of Wan Wu. So now on to my study. This map shows the villages around the Zhengdong Plain where I got data from, and in particular uh, the areas area to the east, including Wan Jai, Wan Bo, and Yang Kwai. This is known as the Menglang village tract. Uh, the data I have, uh, the majority of the data was from a 406 word list collected in 2006. And, uh, but I've also included, for comparison, some uh, data from earlier 2003 and four, and that used a slightly different word list. So most of the variation is, uh, most of the um, phoneme inventories are the same from the, for the different varieties. So I'm only presenting here the, uh, the places where there is variation. Um, or previous studies have shown variation. Uh, the top row shows Zhengdong Shan and I've uh, highlighted that in yellow uh, and other places in yellow are where 
Kern varieties have taken on Shan features. And uh, the bright green highlighting shows where original Kern uh, pronunciations have been retained. The cells I've not highlighted show free variation, which could indicate that there is change in progress. Uh, I've highlighted in red these um, two examples of the velar. Uh, in terms of velar clusters, uh, Shan still retains both the uh, unaspirated and the aspirated K in clusters. Um, uh, whereas a couple of the Kern varieties have reduced um, their clusters. Uh, and so that simplification is not uh, assimilating to Shan. So I've highlighted that in a different color. As far as va variation in vowel and tone goes, I've put these together on this slide. And we can see that the distinctive feature of Kuhn, where the split in the A column is between uh, rows two and three, uh, all of the Kuhn varieties have retained that split. So that's a, uh, that's a, a distinctive feature. Um, however, the B column, uh, the B4 is always a low tone, but what used to be a rising tone in the, in the, in the B1, 2, and 3 has changed, uh, has generally changed. The one wall still retains a rising tone. Uh, others have completely changed to a low tone. They've merged like Rassi's, Rassi Petsuk's variety. But a few have changed their shape and they're no longer really rising, but they don't fall quite follow the the same simple downward trajectory that um, that the other tones follow. So more studies probably needed in this, but uh, it seems that change is underway in those um, those varieties. As far as the uh, the vowels, the, the short mid vowels are concerned, um, assuming all current varieties originally went to e and o. Um, a few varieties have changed, have raised those vowels again to be like the Shan pronunciations. Drawing together the previous two slides uh, allows us to summarize and get an overview of the varieties as a whole and it the color coding builds up a picture of which varieties are more conservative and which have changed the most. So we can see that the three varieties in the Munglang area, namely Yang Guai, Wan Jai, and Wan Wu, they have got the most green, so they are the most conservative. Uh, they still have the most distinctively Kuhn features. And also the village of Lan Meng, uh, which is to the north of Chengdung, uh, at least this speaker uh, had uh, retained most of the features, but the tones uh, in the B column had merged. Uh, older speakers from Lan Meng still retained the, uh, the split in the B column, but not this one. Uh, so Lan Meng... Um, seems to be uh, changing, but it's more conservative than the other varieties. So further research, um, there is a need for more detailed study of the short mid-central vowel. Um, as I said, uh, a more focused study of the tone shapes, particularly in those varieties that are changing. and. Um, it was an oversight not to get data from the Gatai area in my study to have direct comparison with uh, Petsuk's data. So, thank you.